हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज विजय कुमार एंड वी आर स्टडिंग रेफ्रिजरेशन एंड एयर कंडीशनिंग इन अवर प्रीवियस वीडियो आई एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द डक सिस्टम एंड डक साइजिंग नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी विल कवर सम टॉपिक पैकेज एयर कंडीशन इन्वर्टर यूनिट्स एंड वेरिएबल रेफ्रिजरेंट फ्लो सिस्टम लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो Packaged air conditioner. The window AC and split AC are usually used for small air conditioning capacity up to three tons. That means up to three TR we use window AC and split AC. Central air conditioning system are used for where the cooling load extends beyond twenty tons. There is a central AC system where the load is twenty TR. Is where the load is more than twenty TR at that locations twenty TR. Central air conditioning systems are used. The packaged air conditioning systems are used for cooling capacity in between these two. That means window and split and central air conditioning system. That means three to twenty TR. In between three to twenty TR, we use packaged air conditioning system. And it is available in following capacity: three, five, seven, ten, and fifteen ton. In market, it is available in these capacities. The packaged air conditioner is a bigger version of window AC. Okay, it is a bigger version. These units are used commonly in places like restaurants, telephone exchange, homes, small halls, etc. The conditioned air are transferred to the space to be considered conditioned through ducting, which is usually hidden in ceiling and walls of the building. In this case. the conditioned air or cooled air is uh, passed through the conditioned space through the ducting with the help of ducting the conditioned air is passed in the conditioned air from the equipment and this ducting is either hidden in ceiling and wall of the building the unit is placed outside the house a special room in a building or even on top of the roof this unit is factory assembled and skilled technician are needed To install this unit of to this type of unit, the skilled technician are required to install this type of units. Protection devices such as high low pressure switches that means HPLP cut off, overload relay for all motors, water flow and air flow switches are included in the units. Friends, HPLP cut off we will study in the future videos. The compressor have Winding protection thermostat built built into the winding to disconnect the circuit in the case of overheating. There is an thermostat also we will study in the next video. There is an interlocking circuit with the evaporator fan motor starter to ensure that the compressor can only start if fan motor is running. There is interlocking system also. In PAC or packaged air conditioning unit. Following components are there: compressor, it is a three-phase compressor; water-cooled compressor, condenser or air-cooled condenser, may be of two types; electrical panel, thermostatic expansion valve, air filter, front panel and return air grill, evaporator coil, then evaporator fan and housing; heating and humidifying components may be included in the unit. That means where humidification and dehumidification is required. we use heating and humidifying components dehumidification is needed for the cooling medium during summer and humidification for heating mode during winter now in this diagram you can see that this is the p packaged air conditioning system and through this packaged air conditioning system the conditioned air is going into the conditioned space like this in this building it is going into the conditioned space and through the indoors units Conditioned air is going into the room, and this one is the return air duct. This one is the return air duct which is coming into the conditioned space for again reconditioning and recirculation. Okay, like this. This is a packaged air conditioning system, and it is the bigger unit and bigger unit similar to the window AC, but it is a bigger unit. Okay, now let's see the another type of AC. Inverter AC units. In non-inverter AC, the compressor is either off or on. In non-inverter AC or conventional AC, 
in that compressor is either off or on. When it is on, it works at full capacity and consumes full electricity. It is designed to consume. When the thermostat reaches the temperature level set in the AC, the compressor stops and fan continues to operate. When the thermostat senses that the temperature has increased, the temp compressor starts again. So it is the in the non-inverter AC compressor works like this. But in non -in but uh, but in inverter technology, compressor works like an accelerator in a car. When compressor needs more power, it gives its more power. When it needs less power, it gives less power. With this technology, the compressor is always on. Compressor is always on, but draws less power or more power depending on the temperature of the incoming air and the level set in the thermostat. That means it depends on the load in the room also. The speed and power of compressor is adjusted appropriately. This technology was developed in Japan and is being used there successfully there successfully for air conditioner and refrigerator. An inverter air conditioner unit has a variable speed compressor motor that adjusts the refrigerant flow inside the unit to control its cooling and heating capacity as required. As the load changes, the flow of refrigerant will change. Accordingly, the required refrigerant will flow into the compressor and accordingly compressor will run based on the load and based on the refrigerant flow. The speed of the compressor motor in an inverter unit is directly proportional to the frequency of the power supply. It uses a variable frequency sensor to control the speed of the motor. It is using variable frequency sensor or variable frequency drive you can say. According to that, uh, the speed of the compressor will vary and uh, as the load changes, the speed will change. But in this case, compressor never off and never runs. It never off. It runs according to load, which in fact regulates the refrigerant flow inside the unit to provide just the right amount of cooling or heating as needed. This eliminates the frequent start-stop cycle, thereby increasing energy efficiency of the unit on a long run. That means in conventional AC, Compressor either start and either off and it will run at full capacity at every time. But in inverter technology, it runs at a slow speed. So in this case, energy efficiency and energy consumption, energy efficiency is more, energy consumption is less. Okay. Now let's see difference between non-inverter AC and inverter AC. It works on a variable speed, I have already explained, and non-inverter works on constant speed or fixed speed. Energy consumption in inverter AC is less and in non-inverter AC it is more. That means efficiency in inverter AC is more and efficiency of non-inverter AC is less. Noise. The inverter AC works silently, but the non-inverter AC have sound. It works and it causes a significant amount of noise when operating. Cooling. Inverter AC is even a compressor never goes off. The room can be maintained at a constant temperature which also facilitates good sleep. In this case, the compressor never goes off. That means it, never, it always runs according to the load in the room or according to the temperature in the room. So, in this case, cooling is always there. But in this case, when compressor is off, so there is a cooling, heating, cooling, heating, like this, switching is there. Life span, or you can say durability. Durability of inverter AC is more because there is no sudden stop of compressor and run of compressor, operation of compressor. But in non-inverter AC, compressor on and off throughout its operation, causing a significant amount of noise and it is causing also the system or refrigeration system. It the effect, the, but in the non-inverter AC, the compressor motor turns on and off throughout its operation, causing a significant amount of noise. So durability of non-inverter AC is less. Cost. However, the inverter AC is costly, and non-inverter AC is 
are cheaper than the, than the inverter AC. But in a long run, if we are using the inverter AC and in terms of electricity consumption, the non-inverter ACs are beneficial than the non-inverter AC. Friends, these are the difference between the inverter AC and non-inverter AC which I have explained. Now let's see the another type of refrigeration system that is variable refrigerant flow system. There are two terms, variable refrigerant and variable velocity. What is the difference between these two VRV and VRF? Many people who ask this question mistakenly interpret it as two different HVAC technology. But it, these are two. These two technologies are similar. Actually, these two are different terms for the same type of HVAC technology. Technology is same but terms are different. How it is different? See here, based on inverter technologies, compressors, the first VRV HVAC system wa were invented by Daikin during the early 90s. As a technology leader in the HVAC industry, Daikin had registered the VRV term. So Daikin has registered the VRV term and they, now this term became the patent for the Daikin which stands for variable refrigerant volume as an official trademark. All other companies like Toshiba, Career Air Conditioning, Blue, Blue Star, all these companies use the variable refrigerant flow for their similar HVAC system. That's why technology is same but term is, is different. You have to understand this thing. Eventually, VRF is the most common term for this type of system and this is in the term that will be used for the rest of the article. What is VRF technology? It can easily be related to as the Rolls-Royce Rolls -Royce of the air conditioning system. It is a very sophisticated technology air conditioning system based on several principles. Refrigerant only, where refrigerant is the only cooling medium in the system. Inverter compressor that allows lowering power consumption with the partial cooling and heating loads. Several air handlers, indoor units on the same refrigerant loop and circuit. That means there is one circuit and in one circuit several indoors can be attached and in that circuit one indoor and uh, three sorry three indoor and one outdoor may be installed. It works on the basis of circuits. Ability of modular expansion especially applicable for large projects that can grow in stages. In this case expansion is possible if we are expanding our building and in next building we are we have to use the the same system so we will give we will take and we will expand the existing system typical vrf system structure what is the typical vrf system structure let's see here a typical system consists of an outdoor unit this one is the outdoor unit comprising one or multiple compressor several indoor units like this you see here this indoor this indoor this indoor there are six indoor units which are connected to this outdoor unit. Refrigerant piping, these all, these all are the refrigerant piping running from the outdoor to all indoor. Using refnet joint, copper distributor in pipe, all these are the reference joints. You can say these are the separation tube, these are the reference joints. Like this, these are the refnet joints. Because of these joints, so many indoors are connected. Communication wiring consists of two wired cable. There, in between outdoor and indoor, there is wiring is also there. Wiring connection will be there, which is used for communication. Chain from the outdoor to all indoor, creating an internal closed loop network. Between the one outdoor and there are so many indoors, there is a closed loop network. That I like, that I'll explain. That is an essential part of an VRF installation. What happens if I am using this indoor as a heating unit, then other can be used as cooling unit. So there are different different type of design of VRF. I can run all the indoor either in a heating mode and either, either in a heating mode or in a cooling mode at once. This is one type of design. There is different type of design. Individual indoor units can be run in Heating mode and other is you can be run in cooling mode. If I am if I am uh, operating this indoor in heating mode, then this unit can be run in 
cooling mode so there are it depends upon the design of the system as for the control each indoor is controlled by its own wired control panel you see here this is the wired remote control with this remote i am controlling these two indoor and one indoor also can be controlled with one remote with one remote there are all six indoor can also be controlled it depends upon the design friends enabling controlling all indoors from one location there is one pc controller or you can say central controller there are pc controller also and there is a central remote controller crc what we called it as crc with the help of this with the help of this remote i can control outdoor and indoor all indoors and with the help of pc also we can control all units this is the structure typical structure of vrf system vrf system are of three type i have already explained cooling only system in that only cooling is required it is it is a the system can only be cooled and it is less popular heat pump system most popular heat pump system most popular because in heat pump system we can use the system for cooling and for heating also that's why this one is the most popular but in cooling only system only cooling will be done during the winter season it will not run on heating system but heat pump system will run on cooling mode and heating mode also that's why it is most popular heat recovery system though these systems are the most sophisticated one where cooling and heating may be available by each indoor units in this case in this case i have already explained it depends upon the design of the vrs vrs system in the building that all the indoors are working in a heating mode all the indoors are working on a cooling mode but in heat recovery system each individual indoor units can be work independently in one indoor unit can work in heating mode and another indoor unit can work in a cooling mode so all these and all these indoors like in the previous slides if i say all six indoors are connected with one outdoor there is this suppose this is c1 circuit circuit 1 like in at fifth floor it is circuit 1 if i say at four, fifth floor there is another circuit fifth floor of a building there is another circuit that we called it as c2 circuit or circuit 2 so all these circuits may be work in heating or cooling it depends completely on design friends okay now in the next video we will study about the refrigeration control in that we will study about the hp cutoff lp cutoff vav control system and thermostat and humidistat thanks for watching this video and have a good day bye bye friends